I like that plastic piece. You guys like that plastic piece? I think it looks stylish. It looks nice and sleek. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Essential Cycling. This is a 2021 Trek Domani SL6 road bike in all black. This is their endurance model. It is a little bit more upright. You can see I lowered the bars a bit, but for the most part, the bike is a little bit more upright than their more racier models, such as the Amanda and the Madone. This bike is the SL6, which basically means it has full Shimano Altegra R8020, I believe is the model number. It is the mechanical shifting. You got cables operated, no electronic, no DI2 here. Mechanical shifting, hydraulic disc. Everything's going disc nowadays. Model, pretty good one. This has been discontinued. I think this is the last year it's going on. Altegra Dirt Ace are all electric right now. And this is a really nice spec because it works really well, but it's not overly expensive. So with the SL6 model, we get full Altegra hydraulic braking mechanical shifting group set. We get a full carbon frame, carbon fork, carbon seat post, aluminum stem, aluminum bars, aluminum wheels. So the aluminum parts in this bike are part of the reason why I bought it. The aluminum bars just give peace of mind. If the bike falls over, if I fall off, I can be a little bit more careless with it as opposed to if they were made of carbon. Same thing with the aluminum wheels. These wheels on their website, they spec them. I think the weight for these wheels on their website is 1800 grams altogether. So not super lightweight, but not super heavy boat anchors like a lot of other aluminum wheels can be for the 105 equipped bikes and lower. Roll really good. Again, not the lightest things in the world. A good, decent, all-around training wheel and just a good, reliable aluminum wheel set that rolls pretty well. So on those wheels, we got the Bontrager R2 hard case light and 32 millimeter. These do measure out to about 34 and a half millimeters. They are actually pretty good. I did take them on a gravel ride. You probably see that on the channel. Wheels are tubeless ready. The tires are not. I have not really had any issues running tubes. Tubes have worked totally fine. I do prefer tubeless, but tubes are nice and easy. So with this being an endurance bike, we've got a nice 5034 compact chain set with an 1134 cassette in the back. This is all 11 speed. Still got that plastic piece. I like that plastic piece. You guys like that plastic piece? I think it looks stylish. It looks nice and sleek. 1134 in the back. The gaps, I don't really notice it. They are a little bit bigger than some of the gaps on my TCR or the tighter spacing cassettes, but they're not super, super wide. They're also not super narrow, but it does give you good range. You get a nice 34 to 34, one to one ratio climbing gear on this. So one thing that everyone probably knows about this bike already is it does have down tube storage right here. I actually, I didn't open it properly. I actually put a spare derailleur hanger. I kind of zip tied it in there. And in there I have two inner tubes. I was able to stuff two inner tubes in the Bontrager, in the Bontrager bits bag, I think they call it. Um, they say it's only one, but I found a way to stuff two in there. So that's two more I don't need to carry in a saddlebag. So one of the main reasons I bought this bike, I wanted a gravel bike, but I knew I'd be primarily riding on the road most of the time anyway. This is still a road bike, but it does have massive, massive clearance. I mean, with a 32 millimeter tires, I mean, if you guys could just see that, um, camera doesn't know where to focus on. Huge, huge, huge clearance. Trek says you can take, this bike can take 38 millimeter tires. I wouldn't be surprised if it can fit 40 or at least a 42 millimeter. Probably tops out at 42 millimeter tires. I think 38 and 40s are good for just the mixed surface all around riding like I'm doing. It just broadens the versatility of this bike. And the endurance fit on this bike, I did lower the stem a little bit. I'll talk about that in another video. I put a longer steerer tube. That's another, that's another video subject right there. I do like a more aggressive position, but it is nice to have the option to ride a little bit more upright, especially if you're riding in some of the looser gravel or if I ever am so inclined to ride in the snow when it snows here where I am. It's just nice to have that option and definitely easier to ride on that stuff than it would be to ride a super aggressive race bike. So who should buy this bike? I can think of a couple of people. Beginner cyclists that are looking to make the jump to a carbon bike, but they want versatility and comfort as opposed to full speed. This bike is going to be fast and zippy, but it's not going to be anywhere near as zippy or as fun to ride as a TCR or the Trek Imanda. However, those bikes, you really got to commit to it and it might not be super comfortable to be in that position all the time. This bike kind of allows you to be a little bit more upright. If you go through a period of your cycling career that you're not really riding that much, 
this is still not going to feel like a stranger. It's going to fit a lot more people. You don't have to worry about being super flexible. Another group would be longtime racing cyclists that already have race bikes and they want an all road bike with wide tire clearance, but they don't need a full on dedicated gravel bike. They don't want to go the full hog and just get something that fits super knobby tired, maybe a one by 11, one by 12 drivetrain. This is pretty much the category that I fell into. I wanted something that can kind of do double duty. I could have gone with something a little bit lighter like the Giant Defy, for example, but again, I wanted the wide tire clearance and the versatility of this bike than the Giant Defy. Also, the paint job just looks amazing. Black is beautiful. So also, people that are looking for a good value bike, because this bike, it pretty much hits the nail on the head as far as a value carbon bike. It has just the right amount of carbon parts, but doesn't have anything crazy bling. And the ride experience isn't really going to be too different. I can tell you right now, you drop a set of zip or MV wheels or a set of nice carbon wheels on this bike, slam the stem a bit, you're going to get almost the same ride experience as its more expensive cousins in the family, like the Damani SL7 or even the SLR6 or 7. Yeah, you're not going to get the full electronic shifting experience, but in my experience, as far as riding it, mechanical works just as fine. It's still a great way to save money. Just get the mechanical bike, aluminum wheels, upgrade to a set of nice carbon wheels down the road, and then now you'll have a great set of training or all work, all road, all purpose aluminum wheels and a set of super fun, super nice carbon wheels when you want to go fast and have a zippy feeling bike. So with the wheels, I mean, this bike is pretty heavy. It weighs around 24, 25 pounds. I think it weighs about 22, 23 pounds, but that weight does make it a great training bike, especially in the off season when it gets cold. The heavier the bike is, guys, the, more, the harder you're gonna have to work, and that just translates to you getting stronger. And at the end of the day, it's about the rider, not the bike. So who shouldn't buy this bike? Racers that are looking for the lightest and stiffest race bike. I was gonna buy this bike about a year ago, but I decided to go to the TCR because I wanted the TCR. And if I had the chance, I'd still probably pick the TCR if I could only have one bike because I'm ro mostly riding on the road. I don't need the super big tire clearances of a of an endurance bike or gravel bike and then with the TCR I just feel like I can kind of convert that into a light gravel machine anyway and also cyclists that already have a dedicated race bike and gravel bike since this is kind of a, bit, a little bit of redundancy I mean if you want to go off-road you get your gravel bike on road you get your race bike you don't need something that's like a jack of all trades because you already have dedicated tools for those jobs so my experience so far is this bike fits well rides pretty smooth it doesn't feel boring or slow obviously not it's not as fast or zippy as my race bikes but nonetheless still a lot of fun the wider tires can turn it into a gravel bike i have ridden these tires on gravel and it did pretty good it's going to get even better when i put even wider tires i think i'm going to put 40 mils on here lowering the bars does make it feel a little bit more racy which i do i do appreciate also it's not going to be as snappy just because the geometry is a little bit slower which leads it to be more stable I do plan on getting a set of carbon rims for this bike. I'm looking at the Zip 303s, which are probably going to be a bit more of like, a, this is going to be like an all-road, snappy, all-road gravel bike, do-everything bike. That way I'll be able to put my carbon wheels on when I'm just riding for pleasure or fun, and my aluminum wheels on in the off-seasons or if I'm just commuting or if I'm riding the bike for utility or just looking to get out, the, out there and get some miles in on a training ride. I mentioned before, actual weight of the bike is about 23 pounds. It's a little disappointing. But for the price and my reason for riding this bike, it doesn't really matter to me. And all the articles out there are right. It doesn't feel heavy when riding. But then again, maybe that's because I'm a heavy rider anyway. I'm 205 pounds. And that being said, a full carbon DA2 or ETAP bike like the Damani SL7 or I was looking at the Cervelo Aspero. It would be faster, no doubt but it also cost over $6,000. And I don't want to spend that type of money on this type of bike. So it really just comes down to your perception. If you want an all road bike that can do everything and you don't mind a little bit of extra weight, this was a great bike compared to a steel touring bike at 30 pounds. This is super lightweight, super fun, super racy. Compared to a high-end race bike, super lightweight bike, yeah, this is a little bit more boring. My experience with this bike is I thought it would be very slow handling, but it actually it, it matches pretty good. You don't have to really lean in too hard on turns. You can zip around corners fairly easily. Again, not like a, it's not twitchy like a race bike, but it's not super slow like a big like driving a big tractor trailer. So I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. That's been my experience, my first impressions with the Domani SL6 Endurance Bike 2021 model in the beautiful all-black paint job. Really happy with this purchase. It suits my needs perfectly fine. If I'm ever in a situation where I can only fit one bike if I have a small apartment, this bike can do everything and then some. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you guys soon. See you on the road. Bye.